Hi, thanks for joining. My name is Debbie Arbini, a Senior Program Manager here at Microsoft, and I'll be guiding you through this video. Today, I'm going to review running a Microsoft Teams pilot, which is really an ideal way to begin your Skype to Teams journey. In our context, a pilot is a validation of how Teams will be implemented within your organization, just on a smaller scale. Your pilot should be conducted by end users, not IT, and should include a formal test plan and feedback channel for gathering insights. Think of the pilot as a dry run prior to deploying Teams organization-wide. By enabling Teams for a targeted group of users, you can establish champions to help evangelize Teams with your peers, detect and mitigate issues within a controlled group, and validate both technical and organizational readiness. There are six key steps to a successful pilot. The first step lays the foundation by defining logistics, such as identifying stakeholders accountable for project success, outlining the use cases that you have for Skype today that you'll want to validate with Teams, leveraging the roadmap to inform your pilot test plan, defining how you'll measure success of the pilot, and finally, setting your pilot timeline. It's recommended to allow at least 30 days for adequate testing. The next step is to choose users to participate in the pilot. If you're unsure who to select, start with your top users of Skype for Business. They can bring their own real-world scenarios to the table that you may have not considered. Now remember, your pilot is not just about validating functionality, but also about verifying organizational readiness. So be sure to include your support agents in your pilot too. They can help verify that your help desk is ready to take calls from end users. A formal test plan enables your participants to run through a series of real world tasks that align with your defined use cases. Depending on the number of required features and availability, you may opt to test all features at once or create a cadence where you add more features or pilot users over a period of time. When creating a feedback loop, consider an online survey, which can provide an easy way for users to share their experiences. Step four is about defining your awareness campaign. Emails are a great way to inform and set expectations with your participants, offer targeted value messaging, and share resources such as links to training, feedback, and support. You can find pilot readiness resources such as email templates at the link listed on the slide. Once you communicate the start of your pilot, establish a weekly cadence with your project team to track progress such as user participation, network health, feedback, and support calls. This enables you to easily remedy any issues that may arise and keep your pilot on track. Remember that while Teams is typically on by default, it's a good best practice to verify that your pilot users are all enabled with the proper Teams credentials. At the end of your pilot, take time to assess your outcomes. Based on your results, you may decide to run Skype and Teams side by side for select or all workloads, or continue with your current deployment until the Teams roadmap better meets your needs. This may mean revisiting a pilot at a later time. Remember, the Skype to Teams journey is not one size fits all. Utilize a pilot to help inform the best way for your organization to proceed, ultimately ensuring a positive user experience and driving optimal business outcomes. Thanks for watching.